My favorite way to explore a city is to ride its transit system. Over the years, I've checked out many different systems around the world, but there are always more to ride. In this video, join me as I try out a transit network that's new to me. This is my first time riding BART in the San Francisco Bay Area. Our trip starts at Richmond Amtrak Station. We just arrived here from Chicago on the California Zephyr long distance train. The transfer between Amtrak and BART is super easy here at Richmond. There's a shared underpass underneath the tracks, very similar to New Carrollton Station in Maryland. It's just a short walk. First things first, fare. BART uses the Clipper card, just like the other public transportation agencies in the Bay Area. There are machines in the concourse. BART fares are distance-based. It's important to know how much you need to pay to reach your destination and load enough money on your card. The train we're getting on is an old train, part of the Legacy fleet. I'll talk more about it towards the end of the video. How is it? It's like you have your own sofa. Um, what do these trains remind you of? And there's a reason for that. BART, Metro, and Atlanta's MARTA system were all built around the same time using many of the same planning methods. Legacy transit systems like the Boston T, New York Subway, or Chicago L use very old infrastructure, some of it dating back to the 19th century. Though these systems have seen expansion since, even the new infrastructure is limited by the specifications of the oldest infrastructure. In Chicago, for example, the trains are very small to allow for tight curves. BART, Washington Metro, and MARTA, on the other hand, were built from scratch. Governments began planning these systems in the 1960s to relieve traffic congestion from highways. The goal was to connect larger regions, offering suburban commuters a comfortable alternative to driving. On the train side, it led to very wide, long trains much larger than the trains on the Chicago L, for example, and very comfortable seating. As for the tracks, what you see is that the lines connect not just city neighborhoods, but the larger metropolitan region. DC Metro has lines that sprawl into Maryland and Virginia. Here in the Bay Area, San Francisco lies on a peninsula, while Oakland and many other urban centers lie on the other side of the bay. In the first half of the 20th century, there were three electric interurbans running on the east side of the bay. The key system, Sacramento Northern, and Southern Pacific's East Bay Electric. While they originally terminated at a ferry terminal, in 1939, a new pair of tracks opened on the Transbay Bridge. These took the electric interurbans into downtown San Francisco. Unfortunately, by 1958, the last of these systems had closed. The tracks on the bridge were ripped out. Like many systems, increased car use was partially to blame. Yet, literally at the same time, officials from several different counties around the bay had begun coming up with a new plan to build a Transbay transit system to relieve traffic congestion, of all things. These plans became the Bay Area Rapid Transit, or BART. The first segment opened in 1972. In 1974, a brand new tunnel known as the Transbay Tube opened underneath the bay, once again creating a rail link between Oakland and San Francisco. Today, the BART network stretches for 131 miles, or 211 kilometers, connecting places as far away as San Jose, Dublin Pleasanton, or Antioch. Really, it's an intercity transit system, which I just find so cool. 
The vast majority of BART is broad gauge. The tracks are 5 feet 6 inches or 1626 millimeters wide, much wider than standard gauge tracks used on most systems. These broad gauge tracks are electrified by a third rail. There is also a short cable hauled people mover at Oakland Airport. And up here, there's a short stretch of rail that forms another exception, but we'll talk about that in Saturday's video. I love the noise these trains make. People often complain BART is loud, and those complaints are legitimate, but as a transit fan, I love it. The doors are closing. Please stand clear at the doors. Our train from Richmond is now passing through downtown Oakland. This is where the train gets very busy. West Oakland is the last stop on this side of the bay. Soon, we enter the Transbay Tube. As our ears pop, we soon arrive into the heart of San Francisco. The first stop is Embarcadero, under Market Street. We're getting off two stops later, at Powell Street.
The train we just rode was part of the Legacy fleet, built by Rohr in the 1970s. They entered service when BART originally opened in 1972. I really like them, their quirky design reminds me of the Tokyo Metro 7000 series. Unfortunately, you probably won't have a chance to ride them anymore. In October 2023, BART pulled the last of the Legacy fleet trains out of regular service. Over the next few months, they may be used occasionally in case of an emergency or such, but they've already had a final run and everything. Instead, if you ride BART today, you'll catch one of these, a so-called Fleet of the Future train. Built by Bombardier and Alstom, these entered service in 2018. Though I guess now they should call them Fleet of the Present? Let me know what you think. These trains have plenty of space for wheelchairs and bicycles. The two big differences with the Legacy fleet are onboard information and the seats. Digital screens mounted on the walls show passengers where on the system the train is, and the seats are less cushioned. They're definitely harder than the older seats, but still padded much more than seats on most transit systems like the CTA or the MTA. I spent more than two hours sitting in them, and I felt fine. In a lot of ways, the interior of these newer trains reminds me of the Metro 7000 series in Washington, D.C. Like I said before, BART has a lot of similarities with the D.C. Metro and with MARTA in Atlanta. And all that has to do with the similar history that these three systems share. Powell Street, like all stations under Market Street, is shared with Muni Metro. BART trains use the bottom floor of the double-deck tunnel, while Muni Metro uses the top level. I'll talk more about this in a future video as well. Outside, it's a transit paradise. You can hop on the cable car, transfer to a historic streetcar, or get on a trolley bus. Our hostel is right here, so we'll be using this as the home base for the next few videos, where we explore more of San Francisco transit. Anyways, that's it for today's review. On Saturday, we'll be sharing another BART video, this time traveling all the way to the end of the yellow line to check out the strange way that they built the most recent extension there. We'll look at a platform with no exits and European diesel trains. You won't want to miss it. Subscribe to Trains Are Awesome today. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.